All right, hello everyone. Welcome back to the Road to Pro series. This is episode, I don't know what episode, but what matters is we are 50 days out today. Landmark number 50. Tomorrow will be seven weeks out. So that's exciting. A little bit update wise, I ran a high day yesterday, which wasn't typical. Kyle um, asked me to run a high day or high day, high day column to see how we look today. And uh, I gained, it was like a pound and a half. Sent him check-ins this morning, said looks good. Um, he mentioned to me to fix some, my back pose a little bit. My foot placement was a little wonky in terms of my, um, when, you're, when you hit a back little bicep in bodybuilding, right? You want your hamstrings to show, your adductors, your glutes, and your back. And my foot that I put back for my hamstring was too far back. Now I can know to keep it in line with my front heel and that's a pretty easy way to remember it. So going forward, that looked pretty good. Hamstrings are coming in. I hold a lot of my fat, not in my midsection, hold it in my face, and then I hold it, I would say in my hamstrings. Um, they are coming in though very nicely though, so that's exciting. Uh, tomorrow though, I will be getting a diet change for the first time again in three weeks. We've ran this same diet since 10 weeks out, which is like really cool in terms of a prep standpoint, if anyone's ever prepped before, you just, like me saying that, it's kind of like, whoa, like you didn't have to change your diet for three weeks, getting closer to show, and my food has been really high, so that's just saying, you know, everything's, my body's working very efficiently. Um, you know, we don't, have to, we don't have to pull a lot of food or add a lot of cardio or different, you know, PEDs or stuff like that. So everything's been, been like really smooth this prep, and I'm extremely grateful for that. I'm doing more of a, talk, a car talk this video just because I didn't vlog this morning because I didn't really do much. So it's the same routine. If you guys are cool with seeing me doing cardio, eating breakfast, and then eating pre-meal and going to the gym, I can do that. But I figure being that today, usually I always drive to the gym with someone, whether it's Grant or Allie. And I'm never really alone. And if I'm with them, I'm not going to pull up the camera and just like talk like this. So I enjoy doing this because sometimes I pretend when I'm not recording that I'm talking to the camera and just like spew out random shit. So that's my goal here right now is while I drive to the gym, just kind of share my thoughts with where I'm at with everything. So where am I at, man? About to be seven weeks out. It's crazy to think for the first show, you know, already halfway done with it. And it's amazing to me because this prep has been so easy. Kyle did say it's time to get shredded. So we're gonna be pushing a little bit harder in terms of pulling food down. I'm sure maybe adding another cardio day because I only do it five times a week right now. So things are gonna get more intense in terms of a caloric deficit, but usually in prep, it's never this smooth. It's never this good. So, you know, counting my blessings with this one, counting my blessings for sure. I'm actually going to the gym right now to see Kyle real quick and then go to fitness shop to go train. What am I training? Today's a shoulder day. I got shoulders, a little bit of chest and some triceps. Whenever I train, especially like muscle groups that I need to prioritize and grow, like chest, I always like doing a lot of activation work because, I mean, there's a clip going viral on Instagram. I just saw Nick Walker. He talked about, you know, he, he, he bench pressed 405, or 405, yeah, 405 for 12 reps, had no chest. He pulled it back down now as a pro to 225. Now he says he has somewhat of a chest. So it just shows that weight equals, not exactly muscle, weight equals strength. But in order to be a bodybuilder, it's a lot more than just pushing some weight. So one day when I do get older and my career bodybuilding is whatever that path decides to be, I really do hope I am someone in the industry big enough where I can share my own ideologies of training because I always feel like when I train, it's very different from a lot of people. And you guys may not be able to pick that up on camera, but I'm a very big feel person when it comes to training. And I don't think like if I, one day when I do want to become a coach in bodybuilding, and when I say that, I don't just mean like a tip, like a, here's my plan, like follow this. Like I want to be like a really good bodybuilding coach. Like like Milo Sarsev, the guys, I forgot there's a five minute timer on this, so I don't know really where I cut out. The thing I was talking about that I really want to get across here is that when I get older, and I've done what I've done in bodybuilding, one day I would like to become a coach. And I don't just mean like a typical coach that does programs and 
bunch of clients. Like I want to be a bodybuilding coach that has clients in the Olympia, which obviously got to build your clientele to that. But I also want to be a, reti- like a retired bodybuilder one day, like compete at the Olympia and have that type of career. And then one day when I do get to that level, I could spread my ideology because, all right, I walked the walk and now I'm you know, doing the talk for people or whatever, where I could spread my beliefs on training because I'm a big believer when it comes to training of feel. And what I mean by that is I obviously got to feel the muscle, but I also mean that I don't believe that one exercise is like perfect slash agrees with everyone's body. What do I mean by that? For some people, the bench press works great. Some people can get a really, really great chest by a simple bench press. And for others, they don't work like that. Some people, certain machines work great for them. Others, it doesn't, you know? So it's a, it's a very fine, like, you just gotta be able to be very in tune with your body. And if you are, the better you are. All right, one second, I'll hop out of the car real quick. The more in tune you are with your body, the more you know what's going on, the more you know what works, what doesn't work, what feels good, but doesn't feel good. And you could feel that with food, you could feel that with exercises, you could feel that with PEDs, supplements, anything. You know, it goes for anything across the board, whatever you do to your body and how it reacts to you. And that's obviously going to help make a bodybuilder really good. So in these next coming weeks, my physique is going to start changing dramatically. I mean, I have a weight cap of, I think, it really depends on what they weigh me in at. That's the interesting thing with NPC is I had a friend of mine who was, I know is taller than me, got weighed in at my weight cap. And my weight cap that they put me in at was even pushing my height a little bit. Like they, they, they gave me like a half or a quarter of an inch. And my weight cap is like 205, I believe. That's what they told me last time, 205 for classic. So, I mean, in order to get down to 205, I still gotta lose another 10 pounds. 10 pounds of fat? You guys ever see those, those photos of fat where it's the yellow, um, you know, fucking diagram or whatever, model of fat compared to five pounds of muscle? Imagine that five pounds of fat across the body. That's a lot of fucking fat. That covers a lot of lines. So once that gets stripped off my frame, the waist shrinks in and my muscles get harder and get a little grainier really excited to show off this physique I mean it took it took the year off last year to you know sculpt up and build up my physique because I really needed some tissue in my, my frame I wasn't able I don't I don't think my physique was pro worthy in all honesty and that takes something to say that you know I've been doing Roto Pro since I was 17 and I would agree I don't think my physique was pro worthy um, even last year like I, I looked I looked pretty good you can see with the other competitors my size was there, conditioning was there. But the simple mishap of, you know, maybe the one pose I was doing wasn't suited for my physique. And then after I uh, crumbled on the stage by getting my lat like nice and locked up, which what happened was some guy, we were ending up doing a pose, my arm got bumped up and I had a really bad cramp slash couldn't activate my lat. And if I was, you know, maybe pro level, I could have realized, oh shit. That lat's not gonna work. Let me pull out this other pose. Doesn't show that lat. Hide that, you know? So, maybe if I made that change, I'd be a pro, but like I've said before, I worked really, that made me work really hard getting my third place. And just excited to show it off, man. I really am. The show's in New Jersey, uh, the first show. It's a, it's a re, a requalifying show. It's a regional show. If you guys wanna pop out, it would be in Teaneck, the Teaneck Marriott, April 6th. So, I know, obviously, I'm going to have friends and family there, but any of you guys, I've had people come to my shows before. When I get ready for a show, it depends on, depends on the mood. I'm a very, like, focus on the thing at hand. All right, I'm about to go compete. I want to focus on this. So, like, me and people before the show typically isn't my cup of tea. I'll talk to everyone after, but beforehand, like, when I'm going backstage, like, I've had instances like people, like, come up to me, and I'm like, yo, like kind of rushing to go pump up, you know? Just give me a sec. Let me, let me do my thing first, and then I'll come talk chat with everyone. So, it'd be really cool if you guys from the area can pop out, have a really big crowd, and have people cheer, you know? So, that'd be really dope. And Ali's competing that same day as well. So, both of us, hopefully, if all goes well, we win everything. 
and then we just take over the poster. We have a really cool day together. And then we go back into prep on a high. I just walked in the gym and this song was on and that put me in a great mood. Yeah. You like this song? We just start slow dancing in the middle of the gym. No, I'm cringing. <laughs> All right, finished up our workout. I hope this little dead mouse or dead cat is making no wind come through to the microphone. But I'm going to a new sushi spot. If you guys watch my old prep videos, I would always get refeeds at a sushi spot called Fuchsia. There's also a really good sushi spot here in Asbury, which is right next to the gym I've been training at. And I've gone here with Ali. They have really high quality sushi. They do come in a little bit like a bigger roll. So I spoke to Kyle about it. We went over it, so I got three tuna rolls, one salmon roll, um, and it's really good. So I'm hoping it, hoping it tastes just as good as I expect. This is the first refeed, Pat. First time I've eaten out since I don't know, since seven weeks. So nine weeks ago. Hopefully, it doesn't disappoint. Just sweet. All right, so sushi acquired fucking success. It looks beautiful. You guys gotta give me one second, because I came prepared with my digestive, well, what is it, my digestive enzymes and glucose disposal agents. There's something I take, I make sure I take 1.5 grams of berberine a day, a digestive enzyme every meal, and then uh, meals with like over 50 grams of carbs, I just take like one GDA. If it's more than 50, you take two. I don't too crazy. I got my own salt with me. Let's check this bad boy out. Salmon roll, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. And then we got all the tuna rolls. She looks good. Um, I'm not gonna use soy sauce just because I do notice more water retention with soy sauce. So I'm just gonna salt this meal as like I normally would for a meal, which is a good amount of sodium. One, two, three, four, five, six. There you go. I'm like suffocating, freaking out. Okay. 
So these people are going on a date. Oh, where are my chopsticks? Huh? What the fuck? I know she put them in here. Gotta be pressed. Fuck's going on? Where are my chopsticks? I was going to pack the uh, fork and the fork car set and then the utensil set Allie got me for Valentine's Day, which would have been very handy right here. But no, now I don't have utensils to eat with. Hold on, am I stupid, bro? Not in this, t not in this top zipper. We check that off. Open gym bag. Why would chopsticks be in here? Maybe I dropped them. Negative. Floor. Found them. Fucker, dude. Yes, I got them. Gotta relax so I can enjoy the first bite. Maybe get some air in here. Just crack it open a little bit. Turn off the car. Is that a fish scale? I swear to God, it's a fish scale. <laughs> All right. Hopefully next bite's a little more promising. Let me talk about my workout. So, I didn't get to record everything. I apologize in advance, but I think you guys accepted me for who I am based off the comments in that one video where I talked about how I don't use tripods. I focus on my workout, and if it's inconvenient for me to record, I just won't record it. For example, there's a lot of times today where I couldn't find an area to prop this up and record, but I'll give me the rundown on the workout. So what I am doing is I am training abs before some of my sessions. I trained abs today first, got warmed up through that. Then I went into a, a peck fly, and sometimes at night, when I'm nice and relaxed and in tune, I'll feel some muscles, and I'm like, dude, I can never contract this upper chest. Like, I'll go like this slowly. I'm like, wow, that feels good. And but I'm like, how do I like, get this real good squeeze? So like, I turn my hands like this, and I'd squeeze like this. I was like, damn, that feels good. And at this gym, they have a seated peck fly with like the big, the big pads on your elbows. So what I would do is I'd sit down in the, t in the thing, I turned my hands like this, I chest flied, and it felt fucking amazing. So that was the first thing I did. It was a chest movement. Give me a sec. And then I went upstairs, and I wanted to warm up my front delts before I went into a heavy shoulder press. Not just to warm it up and get it nice and loose, because my body was already warm. I just like to get more activation and blood into that area I'm about to train. So I did some front raises on the uh, cable machine, which I believe I recorded. Then I went into my shoulder press, which was always recording. I looked fucking nuts from behind. My back, I'm so like impressed with my back and how I developed it. It looks phenomenal. I'm very proud of that. Um, shoulders are also really big too. And being that that was my main press, I was able to go pretty heavy on that. I hit 210 on that OHP, the middle, whatever, the shoulder press. Um, I never touched the weight before. So I believe that was due to obviously not having other presses beforehand. Big bite. Mm. I went to side laterals after that, cable wise. I just think cables are really good, especially for side lateral movements or a machine. Just because when you have a dumbbell, you guys know the bottom portion, you can't really see where I am right now, but there's nothing on your shoulder until you get about like 30 degrees, then your shoulder's activated. But the cable, there's always that tension there. So I did those. Then I went into another chest. I did a chest press. Then I went into, couldn't record that. I tried setting it up, wasn't able to. And then I went into uh, hmm, triceps. Usually on like push days or pull days, I put arms towards the very end and I'm, dude, I'm beat. I don't want to like, I, I, I'm not saying I half ass it, but you just can't give the full energy you gave in the beginning of your workout. So I put triceps at like the 70% mark. 80, whatever, 75, and was able to get a really good contraction on them. I recorded one exercise before the um, underhand cuffs. I did um, just a really long tricep rope, and that tricep rope, with how long it is, I'm able to bend my body and have my elbows aligned with the rope instead of just up and down, like I'm like at like a 45 degree angle. 
And dude, I got feathers in my triceps right now. And then I was just thinking, imagine another seven weeks. And then after that, making my physique better, whether we carb up more or shred more, whatever it is for that national show. So that was awesome to see. I went into rear delt, two rear delt movements. I did a cable going like this. And the dumbbells bend over, super set into that, which also didn't record it towards the end of my workout. I was going faster pace at this point and wanted to get the fuck out of there. So I apologize. Making sure parking police ain't coming on a 15 minute spot. And then the last thing I did was forearms. Um, I was just hitting like a front double and I was like, huh, the forearms, I can see my muscles really well in it. So why not just train them a little bit? Did a little form, that's why I showed you guys my veins. I got a really good pump there. And that was it for the workout. About an hour and a half. It was good. Real good. But I'm going to enjoy this shit. Mm. Mm. Last bite, everyone has rules. Oh no. Last bite, best bite. <laughs> Mixed Dave Portnoy and Jesse James West in there. It's funny. Where's my salmon roll, bro? How stupid am I, dude? I keep losing my shit. Oh, this looks good. See, I wonder if this is Atlantic Farm Raised or Wild Caught. The chances are it's Atlantic Farm Raised, but the color of that does look wild caught, but the food industry is really good at making it look like that. Mm. That's wild caught, baby. I hope. Go ahead and put salt on it. Mm. The fish quality of the salmon was much better than the tuna. The tuna was kind of mushy. Probably wasn't like their freshest fish they had in their restaurant. Mm. This one's banging, dude. Fuck yeah. When I keep recording post-show, you guys are in for a fucking treat. The way I reverse, or if I reverse how I did last time, I was able to pound food. I would get eight times six. I'd get like 50 rolls of sushi. Maybe, and then I'm gonna get some comments now. This one a lot, but I was eating seven meals a day with my post workout meal being eight rolls of sushi. So I was eating a lot of fucking food and staying lean and looking good because it was post prep. Ideally, post prep, do the same thing and get my weight up to like 235 with lines and shape and condition. It'd be nuts. Real last bite, best bite. <clears throat> Time to get out of this parking spot before I get arrested. And I'll see you back at the house. All right, guys, I'm gonna outro the video here. Uh, leave a like and a comment down below. It means a lot. And I'm also gonna be doing a QA and a in next video or Sunday's rest day video because that's gonna be its own video with no training. So leave your questions down here in this video for me to do a Q&A on Sunday and that will be for Monday's video. So yeah, see you guys in the next one.